For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas. The Israeli offensive continued today, killing at least 100 Gazans in one of the bloodiest days so far. Here's the latest from Gaza. Relentless shelling of Gaza has so far killed nearly 1,200, with at least 80% being civilians, according to the UN. Civilian infrastructure continues to be targeted. On Tuesday, Gaza's only power station was shelled, threatening a humanitarian crisis, said Gaza officials. Hospitals are unable to cope with the thousands of injuries and shortages of medicine and power. Power is expected to go out completely because the quantities we have will not suffice for a few days, which threatens various hospital departments, especially intensive care units, dialysis, pediatrics and surgery departments are threatened with collapse. My life would be threatened, not just me, all patients suffering from renal failure. Also, transportation will become difficult. I am, for example, confined to a wheelchair. The ambulance comes to pick me up and brings me back. If the ambulance does not come, how will I come? If there's no fuel, there's no transportation. On Tuesday, Doctors Without Borders strongly condemned Israeli attacks on Gaza hospitals as a violation of international humanitarian law. Israel has so far destroyed at least 18 medical centers. Heads of state from a number of Latin American nations today issued a rejection of Israel's assaults in the Gaza Strip. At the Mercosur summit, Brazil's President Dilma Rousseff called the event a massacre. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was one of the leaders to condemn the atrocity. We are shocked with the images, not only in this part of the world, but I think all over humanity is pleading for an end to the violence, an end to these attacks against innocent men, women and children. The numbers are chilling. 50 mosques have been destroyed. We must consider what this means for the Muslim faith and for their religion, their holy places. So it is an issue which has sparked sympathy and public opinion all over the world. Meanwhile, in a further sign of the growing opposition in Latin America to Israeli actions, both Chile and Peru today recalled their ambassadors to Israel. Chilean Foreign Minister Geraldo Munez demanded a ceasefire. Presidents from Mercosur member nations, the South American Common Market, met today here in Caracas. The bloc brings together some of South America's largest economies. At today's Mercosur summit, the bloc approved a de declaration to establish a special economic zone with other regional trade groups, ALBA, Petrocaribe, and CARICOM. The proposal aims to strengthen trade and industrialization across the continent. At the conference, Argentinian Minister Deborah Giorgi credited regional cooperation for a decrease in unemployment from 15 to 6 percent and for lifting 61 million people out of poverty. So which countries are included in Mercosur? So far, the bloc includes Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay and Venezuela. And at this year's summit, Mercosur members are considering Bolivia, Ecuador and Paraguay as new members. An Argentina delegation is in New York today in an attempt to reach a last-minute deal with the holdout vulture fund creditors. The deadline to reach a deal imposed by a U.S. judge is tomorrow. During a press conference, the Argentinian head of cabinet dismissed claims that Argentina will default on its loans. Argentina paga. Argentina Argentina pays. Argentina fulfills its financial obligations. So whatever they're trying to say about the Argentinian Republic, about these considerations and a technical default, it does not exist. There's a made-up story by rating agencies and it's a made-up story by small groups which aim at destabilizing the system. But the reality is that they have to explain to the Argentinian people and the world why they're refusing to accept what the Argentinian Republic is willing to pay. 
Today, reports emerge that the Ukrainian government has fired ballistic missiles into rebel-held areas of the country over the past 48 hours in a further deepening of the crisis. The U.S. has stepped up sanctions against Russia and President Obama warns of for further escalation. Well, we've also made it clear, as I have many times, that if Russia continues on its current path, the cost on Russia will continue to grow. And today is a reminder that the United States means what it says. And we will rally the international community in standing up for the rights and freedom of people around the world. Today, and building on the measures we announced two weeks ago, the United States is imposing new sanctions in key sectors of the Russian economy, energy, arms, and finance. A Libyan fighter jet was downed in Benghazi today as armed militias overran a Libyan special forces base in the city. The shooting of the plane is the latest sign of the chaos sweeping the country. Meanwhile, a fire at Libya's largest fuel depot continues to burn out of control. The huge blaze followed clashes involving former NATO-backed militias. Canada today evacuated its embassy staff from Libya, a move also made by the U.S. this weekend. Pictures have emerged claiming to show the New York Police Department using excessive force by using a chokehold on a pregnant woman. It's the latest PR flub for the department, which critics argue unfairly tar targets African Americans. A rights group circulated pictures of the incident today. Earlier this month, the NYPD allegedly used a chokehold on another man who later died. And on to sports, where a Los Angeles judge okayed the sale of the LA Clippers despite the objections of its owner. The ruling allows former Microsoft executive Steve Ballmer to buy the team for $2 billion. Donald Sterling, owner of the Clippers for 33 years, contested the sale. The deal was brokered by Sterling's ex-wife. In April, Sterling was banned from the NBA for life and fined more than $2.5 million after audio surface revealing Sterling asking his girlfriend to not bring black friends to Clippers games. The entire Clippers team threatened to bo boycott the season if Sterling remained as the owner. The timetable with the judge's tentative decision and the rules. We... As always, we have more on those stories and some others at our website, telesertv.net slash English. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle.